it's Emma here bringing you another episode of the Parent and NI podcast. Welcome along. Uh, this episode is going to be focusing on parents' mental health ahead of World Mental Health Day, which takes place on the 10th of October. And the overall objective of this day is to raise awareness of mental health issues around the world, providing everybody with an opportunity to talk about mental health and also to think about what more needs to be done to make mental health care a reality for people worldwide. This year's theme is on suicide prevention and you can visit the World Health Organization's website for more information on how to get involved in the day and to find out a little bit more about what they're asking people to do in and around the theme. But this month we're going to be focusing on parents' mental health as I said. Uh, we have a brand new article looking at the research on our website which you can check out now at parentandni.org. And in this episode, I have met up with Tiny Life and two mums to discuss their positive minds for Premature Parents Project. So let's have a listen to our chat. My name is Kirsty Richardson. My role with Tiny Life is Head of Operations, which in reality means um, I work with the family support team. Um, and the Tiny Life Family Support Officers um, work all across Northern Ireland and um, provide support to parents who've had a premature baby, both on the neonatal unit and also then um, when it's time for a baby to go home and Tiny Life provides support services out in the community, um, support groups, baby massage, volunteer support, um, as well as um, you know family support officers being able to signpost uh, families and parents to other services that they, they might need there. Um, more specific. Um, my name's Violet Woods. My daughter's called Zoe Woods and she was born on Valentine's Day. She was born six weeks early and she's now almost seven months. Uh, my name is Karen Gillen. Um, my eldest child is Isaac and he was born at 32 weeks and he's now almost four. And my youngest is Hallie and she was born at 36 weeks and she's now almost six months. Okay, so I'm delighted to be in Tiny Life's offices today, talking to Kirsty, Violet and Karen. And we're going to be talking a little bit about um, mental health because next month it is Mental Health Awareness Day. And so if you think about all the challenges that come along with having a newborn baby, lack of sleep, finding your feet with it, um, it is a t challenging time and it can have an impact on your mental health. But if you also think about having a premature baby, and the different complications that can come with that, the different challenges that that maybe throws up, um, that can have maybe even more of an impact on, on mum's mental health. Um, and I think there is actually a statistic around that, that mums are 40% more at, at likely. Least, at least 40% more likely yeah. if you've had a premature baby mm -hmm. um, to experience difficulty with your mental health. Yeah, okay. I think that's all, yeah. So, could you maybe tell us a little bit about kind of your experience of baby coming coming early? So you explained there, um, thirty two weeks, Karen, which your your son was born at, yeah, um, and then your other child, you also had another, yeah, she yeah. was thirty six weeks, thirty six. Okay, can you maybe talk a little bit about your emotions at that time and maybe what you were feeling and around that? Um, more with with Isaac with the first. It was that ignorance is bliss. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there mm -hmm. was no, it didn't understand sort of the concept of prematurity. It had never really been around. Premature babies didn't really know a lot about neonatal units, anything. So um, we had a really complicated pregnancy and even then didn't really expect him to be born early. Yeah. Um, and he was, we nearly, he was nearly born at 28 weeks and they managed to keep us going another four weeks. Um, when he was born still sort of had this assumption that you'd get the usual of get your baby in your arms get all that yeah, yeah. and then nothing <laughs> yeah uh, yeah so that bonding time even yeah. like initially when baby's born that kind of is impacted on them too yeah yeah and what about yourself Violet? Um, the hardest thing for me was probably whenever Zoe came we weren't expecting, I was told at 30 weeks that they were going to try and get me to 34 weeks and um, mm -hmm. she'd stopped growing inside me so they wanted her out and to help her grow and I never Google anything but I've never Googled as much in my life like whether well, she was going to come home. I wasn't worried about her being sick at the time, I was worried that I wasn't going to get to bring her home to her big brother and other family 
Um, so the hardest thing for me was probably my son, mm. who was two at the time, not being able to actually meet her. Yeah, yeah. Which was very difficult. Absolutely. The support that you get within the neonatal unit depends very much on the trust. It's not um, and the hospital. You know, okay. It's not kind of universal all over. But I don't know what your experience was about support. Um, I found it very difficult. Um, you went to the ward and you didn't have your baby and you're in a ward with all these other mums that have their baby. They moved me twice to try and get me away from the mums with their baby because they knew how difficult yeah. it was. But then the bounty girl came in to take a picture of my baby and she wasn't there. Yeah. Um, the girl came in to speak about like different things with your baby and or to show you how to bath them and the baby wasn't there. There wasn't great communication. The girls were brilliant. Like the, I can't fault the girls. The staff were amazing. Like The neonatal girls were brilliant too. But it's just their job to go around each bed mm-hmm. and check that everything's okay. Or like the health visitors phone you trying to organise a heel prick and the baby's in neonatal. Like, yeah, I don't think there's a great communication, yeah. which was very hard. Yeah. You're getting voicemails left while you're up in neonatal, always at your house today to do baby's heel prick. And, you're phoning back and saying, did you know babies in the only um, also? Yeah. I don't think like that, that should be on us to try and no, yeah. we have enough going on in our minds mm-hmm. without having to worry about phoning different people to let them know that the baby's actually in the only And Absolutely. even having to explain that, you know, yeah. it, like, over and over, you know, can be quite... Yeah, that's a very emotional as well. They have to keep going over and over that kind of same thing. Yeah, they're very apologetic. Like the bounty girl came in, she was lovely, and she was like, "Oh no, baby, sorry." And I was like, "No, my baby's in the only And she was like, "I oh, hope everything's okay." And they they are understanding when they know, mm-hmm. but to me, it would be good if there maybe was like a side word or something for parents that don't actually have their babies beside them or with them. Mm-hmm. Like, it would probably be quite beneficial to parents. And so. After that kind of experience then, what or was it after? How did you then learn more about kind of tiny life services? I met Danielle in Neonatal. Okay. Um, she went mind, I think two days a week she was there and she just went mind and had a chat. And it was really nice. I was, she told me what time she was there, I can't remember now, but mm-hmm. like I sort of always tried to be there when she was there because she understood and she had a premature baby. So she was very understanding and just had a general chat and told me about the services and what they done Mm -hmm. which was helpful and nice to know that you were coming home and had support of other people who've been through the same like situation that we have been through and what about yourself um when isaac was in uh we it wasn't danielle at this stage it was a a girl caroline who was there he was actually in on world prematurity day 2015 he was in antrim neonatal unit and uh she had came round then for they were doing their celebration with their balloon release and we met her then um, but it wasn't then until I didn't reach out and had no contact really with with anyone until I then was suffering with uh, postnatal depression and PTSD mm-hmm. and I finally reached out mm-hmm. and sent an email um, just asking sort of what services I could get because it's quite isolating. Yeah, that, that is. I mean, that's incredibly difficult. If you, as, as you said at the start, you're, you, no one really expects. You yeah. know, that you kind of have this image in your head of what it's going to be like when you finally give birth and your baby's here. And maybe when that doesn't live up to expectation and you're, you're worried about your baby as well, you know, where do you go? Where do you go for help? Um, maybe... Kirsty, you can tell us a little bit more about the support that Tiny Life offers. Mm-hmm. I think um, I think just we try very much to try and be that gap between um, it's great if, if, if you've met one of the Tiny Life Family Support Officers before you meet the hospital and uh, before you leave the hospital, sorry, and um, we do just to kind of have that contact and, uh, you know, it's a uh, it's one of the few services I think that we've got the family support officers who you can meet in the hospital and in the unit and talk to, but then are also available when you're when you go home, and that can be that link mm-hmm. um, to the other tiny life services. So then to link in with the groups and with the other things, and that's where you can get the chance to meet other parents who you all have your own journey and all have your own experience, but at least you've got that commonality that you've had a, a, a slightly different experience to people who have had a baby and 
had their baby home with them and you know um, gone through the more conventional services that then meet their health visitor at the right time and the right place whereas you you have experienced that you know of kind of feeling as if you don't know where you fit mm -hmm. and that's hopefully where tiny life can then be that kind of link mm -hmm. um, and that point of contact for you and that kind of listening ear and someone that kind of understands the difficulties um, and to help you link into things that once you are back home and out in the community and um, to the groups and baby massage so I don't know which um, did you come to some of the, the groups Karen? So I attended um, yeah the parent support groups in Antrim and then Carrick then was then established and that was with Isaac that was really the beginning then with Tiny Life so it was it was like a family people who you didn't have to explain yourself to they knew exactly you know what you were going through and even though like you said that your journeys might have been slightly different there'd have been babies born earlier and babies born later you know with different complications and maybe none but you all had that sort of joint understanding that it wasn't what you expected and you know it wasn't something that you'd set out for and there you didn't there was no explanation needed everyone sort of just got on with it and you knew there was no judgment there was nothing like that there was no questions of what's your baby doing look what mine's doing it was just your baby's here and if and even those maybe that had experienced loss that weren't there there was just that real camaraderie mm -hmm. <laughs> Because I think you were you were starting to say that kind that it's difficult when you've gone through that, um, trying to integrate into normal parent and baby activities because, you know, people do like to talk about how, you know, what's your baby doing now, what stage they're at, and are they, you know, different developmental milestones, and and they may be different for your baby, and just having kind of you know being born early, and different complications and things. And it's hard enough as a mum when you're, you know, you kind of want your baby to be well and doing everything. And then if you're somewhere where other parents are talking about their baby um, and haven't, ex you know, haven't experienced what you have, it can be really difficult. And that's something that, you know, with tiny life groups, at least, you know, you've got that sense of, um, you know, that you belong, you know, that you've kind of got that commonality, um, which, and hopefully it's a safe place as well for you each to, to share with each other a wee bit about how you're feeling and um, and with the family support officer as well if you're needing a wee bit extra help or support from other places. Um, I don't know Karen if you were then, you know how did you get, did you get a diagnosis for postnatal depression and that type of thing? Yeah so I, I, Isaac was about three or four months when things hadn't been quite right and uh, it was actually my family, my mum and my sister, that had pointed out sort of how not myself it was. It was very irritable and it wasn't the norm of low mood. Mine, my symptoms were more like anger, irritability, real sort of irrational, like anger out of nowhere. And um, it was they, them that had contacted my GP and then encouraged me to go and finally sort of speak. And that was when I got postnatal depression um, diagnosis. And then it was... Um, Isaac was readmitted at four months uh, to PICU. He had a collapsed lung and was really unwell. And it was after that then that I was diagnosed with PTSD following sort of all the lead up to the birth, the prematurity, and then the complications afterwards. So, um, but the health professionals were brilliant, and I did, you know, tiny life. That was when I'd reached out to them, and they just the support from them and the understanding, and then. The encouragement to talk as well that was around that time that um there was a meeting then with parenting and i and aware um for one of the positive um uh, you know minds, minds meetings yeah. and just finally actually opening up for the first time and saying i have mental health problems and not getting the reaction that it always thought i sort of thought everyone would sort of shy away and not want to talk about it but everyone sort of then opened up and it was like this isn't there's not so much a stigma around this as you think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's one of the reasons that we are we've now developed this project because it is even about giving people the permission to talk about it and actually realise that the you know, and especially for our tiny life parents, you know, that you can um it, it is more likely that you've experienced trauma and then that 
kind of how that goes on to manifest and then if you're able to feel that it's okay to name that and talk about it um, and then actually to get some of the specialist you know sort of support and advice through aware their uh, sort of educational programs of, of ways of helping you to um, be aware of your mental health and ways to keep you healthy and, and what have you so but Karen you'll have had some other you were saying you've had some other um, specialist support as well um, yeah, I received trauma-based counselling then through psychological therapies um, and was with the counsellor for 18 months um, until we finally sort of was able to step out on my own and know myself that it's always there and it has, you know, reared its head again from having my youngest Hallie but I recognised the signs and the symptoms from previous and I reached out a bit earlier this time than I would, you know, than I did previously. So I also have a Tiny Life volunteer who comes to visit once a week um, and this service is provided by Tiny Life for um, practical or just sort of emotional support. Um, so Stephen comes, my volunteer is called Stephen and he comes out once a week and he helps me sort of with the children as in maybe if I get a chance to play with my eldest Isaac while maybe he's giving Hallie a bottle or just playing with her, entertaining her. Um, or the opposite, he can entertain Isaac while I'm maybe having one-to-one -one time with Hallie. Um, he's been helping me sort of out and about with both kids. It's new to me sort of, as most parents who then go from one child to two, mm -hmm. sort of getting out and about trying to time manage or trying to deal with two of them while you're maybe at a, a soft play area. And the he helps with that or just company adult company that's not <laughs> a th a f almost four year old or a baby <laughs> um, so he's been great in, in that sense it's just sort of helping me along sort of feeling a bit more sort of build your confidence yeah. when you're going out in the bike yeah. yeah and uh, yeah building sort of a friendship in that sense that's um, also has an understanding of dealing with sort of premature babies and um, of the experiences we go through, so fantastic. That's brilliant. And Violet, what about yourself? Maybe when you um, first kind of reached out to Tiny Life, what kind of services did you avail of as well? Um, I went the very first class I went to was the uh, Positive Minds for Premature Parents, so that was the first group I'd been to. So I didn't really know what to expect, mm -hmm. which. It was nice because all the mums were there and they were all talking about how they were feeling and that was the first group I'd been to so it created sort of a special bond with everybody mm -hmm. so you always feel a wee bit closer when you've shared like a sad story in a sense yeah. but I felt that everybody in the room sort of felt the same yeah. like I don't think anybody could have said that they didn't have feelings of anxiety or um, actually at the end of the Positive Minds for Premature Parents I'd asked the girl um, how you know whenever you're not just being a mum and being like OCD about things and that's sort of how I was feeling. I was writing things down in the middle of the night and like even before I had Zoe and work like people would be like I'm not touching that because Violet will say I've done it wrong or like I'm not helping you because I'll do it wrong and I always thought I was just really passionate about my work which I am yes but at the same time it's when you're bringing it home and thinking like who's doing it and what way are they doing it while I'm sitting at home that becomes like then the girl had explained that like you know when you're up in the middle of the night worrying about things or worrying about things that you have no control over mm -hmm. like so I was worrying like what's Zoe going to do when she goes to high school like that's mm -hmm. ridiculous she's like not even two months old and I'm worrying about things like that so she had sort of explained a bit about that and I actually at my um, postnatal checkup then I actually sat till the very end, got up and went to walk out the door and thought, you know what, it's now or never, I'll either say something or I just live like this. So I'd said to the doctor, actually, like, there is something I want to say, I do feel a wee bit OCD. I've always felt that way, but now I have two kids, I feel like I really just can't do it anymore mm -hmm. because everything got really extreme. And I honestly don't know how my husband did for me at times because, like, <laughs> shout out to him because... <laughs> I, I was getting annoyed before things even happened and I could sense that and I don't know whether speaking to the doctor and actually making myself realise that I was doing it is what helped me or if 
he did give me medication, which I was worried about because I can't swallow tablets, but he spoke about liquid forms and, you yeah. know, just silly things you worry in the back of your head about. Mm-hmm. So um, he'd give me liquid form medication, which was really good. Mm-hmm. And then after a while, I thought, I don't need this. Why am I taking this every day? So I took myself off it, which was probably the worst thing. Mm-hmm. Like I could have done. My health visitor's amazing, like really, really good. And she, um, I said to her, she was asking how I was feeling. She had sort of encouraged me to go and speak to them as well. And mm-hmm. she asked like a follow-up appointment how I was feeling and I said um you know I took myself off the medication but I'm feeling really low like worse than like I never had like depression feelings or it was more that I couldn't get things done Mm -hmm. and she said that that was the worst thing I could have done like you have to like sort of wean yourself off it Mm -hmm. so you can't just go from like having it to not having it so I do still take it every day and you know I don't I don't know whether it's medication helping or my awareness of actually like that I'm doing it Mm -hmm. that Mm -hmm. helps me Mm -hmm. because now I'll sort of think before I do things or say do you know what that doesn't really matter it's more important that you play with your son because he's only three years old and that the house will be there like you know when I'm not and when he's not Mm -hmm. so it's sort of thinking that way that help does help yeah Maybe a combination of both, you know, yeah. your, your thinking's changed slightly around things. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, the tiny life services I've used, the I go to the carry grip and the antrum grip because I'm Newton Abbey, so I'm able mm-hmm. to go to both grips, which is Brilliant. great. Um, I went to, I want to say normal mums and tots, but maybe mm-hmm. the mums and tots that I would take my son to. Yeah. And I got really fed up and frustrated of people asking, like, or the people go, how old is she? And you tell them, and then they pause for a minute and wait and then they go she's really tiny isn't she and then yeah. like people don't realize and people don't have the like I don't think it's like broadcasted enough or like knowledgeable mm-hmm. enough that mm-hmm. like not all babies are going to be developing at the same time and like it got a bit frustrating like I didn't go back to like two the ones and toss scripts because yeah. which my wee boy then like missed sight because I just can't not be bothered telling the story but you just get a wee bit fed up oh, with it's that. It's kind of draining that you have to go over it yeah. every single time. Whereas it's that. a tiny life grips, like as Karen said, like everybody's just, nobody questions anything or says people are more like fascinated that like, so he's nearly seven months, oh my goodness, is she nearly sitting, you know, yeah. like all months and toss grips would maybe be four or five months and the kids are sitting playing and like you just feel helpless in a sense that mm-hmm. uh, mm-hmm. like you want your daughter to be doing that too. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then the baby massage I've been started the baby massage with Danielle as well so Brilliant. which is nice yeah, yeah just to get out yeah <laughs> <laughs> which is hard on its own at yeah, times but. absolutely yeah so you've talked a lot about there about the kind of benefits um that come into some of the programs have had but also for both of you I think listening to your stories there it was difficult to maybe take those first steps to say I do need a bit of support or maybe I'm struggling. If there's any mums maybe listening to this who are thinking they're in a similar situation, whether they've a premature baby or not, what would your advice be to them around reaching out for support with their mental health? Um, my advice would be if you can speak to somebody who's maybe went through it or been in that situation. One of my best friends, like I was texting outside the doctor saying, um, I really don't want to go in here, what am I going to say, you know, you panic, I almost cancelled the appointment because you don't want to talk about it, but the doctors are so understanding and there's, there is other support there if you don't want to speak to doctors, obviously with the um, AWARE programmes as well, mm-hmm. um, but a few of my friends have been through similar and were quite openly talking about it, which did really help me, but everybody's not going to have that. So I would just say to take the first step because that's going to be the hardest part. But once that's done, in, in yourself, you're going to feel better and more aware of what you're actually doing and your behaviours and you probably will start changing things without even noticing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I agree with everything Violet says and also just the, the speaking, yes, that that's the main step is the minute you say something, it's, it's a weight. It's lifted and it doesn't cure it, it doesn't help it, but it it takes away that sort of anxiety and fear of, of trying to stay hidden and sort of hide it from family or hide it from friends. You don't have to. You can tell everybody and, you know, you speaking out 
like we are today could give somebody else the opportunity to say you know I feel that it, it normalizes it and it's it makes okay. people yeah you know you can be feeling certain ways and if you've been through a trauma like you know traumatic pregnancy premature birth if you haven't whatever you feel is normal mm-hmm. and asking for help isn't doesn't make you any less of a parent less of a mom less of a person mm-hmm. you know it just you're human <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. If some parents would like to know how to get in touch with Tiny Life or, I mean, Parenting and I are delighted to be a partner within the um, Positive Minds for Premature Parents um, and we do have um, a part to play in that with the support groups and also with our free phone support line and um, which parents can call that um, to find out a bit more maybe for, about how to get involved on 0808 8010 um, but would you have any more um, advice, Kirsty, for parents who are maybe looking to get a wee bit more support? Um, certainly the easiest way um, to contact Tiny Life is you can go on our website. If, if you've not come across, um, come across them in any other way, contact details are there and you can just lift the phone, drop us an email. Um, that all the details are on there. We've also got social media, Facebook, um, and again, contact details are on there. And sometimes that can be, um, can be the easiest way. Um, and there are no barriers to that. You know, you literally just need to lift a phone or open up an email on your phone, um, and the, you talk to a wee bit about good. You know, it's quite tempting just to Google, to mm-hmm. Google things, and sometimes that can be. Um, quite um you know you don't always get the information that's going to be helpful and mm. um, so tiny life have also got a life at home website um which has got videos um and it was made with parents and professionals and uh, it's another resource that you can access from home that parents can just go online look at the website look at videos there are um some parents that talk about their experience of suffering from depression after having had a premature baby, mm-hmm. um, feeding issues or lots of different issues that come up. Um, and then also with this partnership, as you say, with Parenting NI and with AWARE, um, being able, Parenting NI, I think one of the, the things that folks talk about is, and um, Violet, you mentioned it, that your older son, you know, when you had a premature baby, it was really difficult because he has needs as well. And that's something that I think Parenting and I can offer help and support mm-hmm. around as yeah. well. Yeah. Um, you know, you, you're not, they're not just offering support just for the premature baby, but for your own, maybe your older child mm-hmm. or children as well, mm-hmm. and any issues that you want to talk around that um, yeah. through the helpline. Um, and then the AWARE programmes um, that we've talked about, so the um, Mood Matters, and again, you can find all that information online um, on, um, on AWARE's website. Um, and then they also have a, a Living Life to the Full programme, um, which is, is a great resource for parents who maybe identify, like you both have this morning, that you, you maybe do need, you know, you maybe are suffering from, whether it be OCD or postnatal depression, um, the Living Life to the Fool can give more specific tools and, and guidance for how you can help to recognise that and things that you can do to help yourself as well. So, um, Listen, I just really want to say thank you so much to both Violet and Karen for speaking so honestly and openly about their experiences. Um, you're very brave um, women for doing it and I really, really appreciate it, honestly. You don't know how many people that um, might help from, from hearing your stories. And also thank you, um, Kirsty, um, for hosting us in Tiny Life's lovely offices today and uh, letting us know a little bit more about your services. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to say another massive thank you to Violet and Karen for sharing their stories. We're very grateful to them for talking about their experiences in order to help others who may also be struggling. Now before we sign off, um, I just wanted to give you a final reminder that before it closes next month, make sure you have your say in this year's Big Parenting Survey. The results from this will help us promote what the issues are for parents here in Northern Ireland and it will also help shape services to meet your needs. So you can take the survey by going to bps2019.questionpro.com uh, you don't need any www dot or anything in front of that. Um, so it's bps2019.questionpro.com. 
So thanks to all of you for listening. And I know you're probably um, sick of hearing me say this at the end of every episode. But if you could, please, particularly if you listen on Apple Podcasts, because we're keen to keep building or following on these. And uh, I'm told that Apple Podcasts is, is the way to do it. So if you're listening on there, I um, would really appreciate you subscribing. And while you're there, uh, leave us a wee rating and review, because as I say, that is really helpful to help other parents find it. So that's us for another month. Um, you'll find us again back on the 21st of October. We're going to have a Parenting Week special episode. Um, so we'll be talking about um, what we're doing for Parenting Week and also reflecting on 40 years of Parenting NI, because as you know, it's our big birthday year. So I look forward to chatting to you then. Uh, take care and we'll see you next month. Bye. <laughs>